Uh-oh. Sorry, folks. Air is several minutes late, and we're going to be just a bit later. <laughs> you see, my Troy game was all the way up to date, but I forgot that it was still set on the press beta rather than just being the open one, so it has to run through a bit of an update. Um, all the stuff's downloaded. It's just it's one of those updates where everything can download, but somehow CA can still make an update take up five to ten minutes of just hard drive time on your computer, which is amazing with SSDs. But that's what we got. So the update is downloading, and we should have things started here in just a few minutes. In the meantime, I can chat with you all, and unless you think I stink. And it is very possible that I stink. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for joining me tonight. Sorry, sorry I'm late. Um, like I said, we'll be getting things started here shortly. Uh, I'm not going to be on camera again tonight, so I'm going to leave it on the starting soon screen until I get the game running or else there'd literally just be a blank screen. Um, I'm going to get the camera back out next week. I'm trying to tinker with a few things with the camera, uh, get things the way I want. So that's part of the reason why I don't have it running. Well, I mean, that's that's good to know, DJ. If you could smell me over the internet, then that would be an incredible stench on my behalf. So I'm glad you can't smell me over the internet. Kier, um, Kier Wilson. Hey, Air. Thanks for joining us tonight. Senshi, glad we got the prophet here with us. Thanks for joining us, Senshi. Again, you all hang tight with me for just a second. I'm waiting on the game to update. I don't know how long it's going to take. Like I said, it's one of those CA things where I downloaded the entire gigabyte of update in just a couple of seconds, but we'll end up waiting for however many minutes that it takes for the update to run. Um, Mythical Beast. Well, what, what Mythical Beast do you all think I should pick? I mean, I haven't tested them super thorough, but when I played a few battles, I wasn't too fond of the Hydra. I didn't think it was that good. The Griffin was okay for mobility but it really felt like Cerberus was the strongest in combat to me. Um, but as far as cool units, indeed, the Hydra Priest is a neat unit. Um, you can get some fun abilities out of the Hydra Priest. Um, I, I like the archers that come with Cerebus, Cerberus. Is that the um, that like the shade archers? Because they're kind of cool. Uh, Ryan says, is this game worth the money? Well, I mean, that depends. For me... I'm not saying like $60 is something that I just go down the street like, hey, here, have $60. I don't care. Um, so I don't do that. But when I do buy a game for $60, I think about how much it costs me to have fun per hour doing things like going out to eat or going to the movies or whatever else like that. And I try and think about games in that perspective. Um, so if it's a game where, for instance, I think I'm going to, let's say, for instance, I'm going to spend 10 hours playing the game in total that I own it. I'm paying $60, so it's $6 an hour. Am, am I okay with that? You know, So I try and think about it in that term um, because I have the $60 that I can shell out for games. That's That part isn't going to hurt me. $60 is a lot of money for you, then I would say I would wait on sales for almost any game. That way you don't have near as much of a um, risk of getting something you don't end up playing. But for me, I, I think it's more of just uh, trying to balance it out and Think about, you know, hey, what, what's worth my time? And uh, movies are super expensive. That's, I don't even know if movie theaters exist anymore, thanks to uh, pandemic stuff. Um, but, I mean, even just renting stuff. I mean, movies are expensive. Going out to eat's really expensive. I mean, a lot of the things you do is expensive. So, I don't know. The games don't come across to me as crazy expensive because I usually play the crap out of any game I buy. Um, but I, it's up to you. Um, I think Troy is an excellent Total War game, especially with Mythos. I think the weird thing is, is that you have to buy the base game to do the Mythos stuff, um, which is probably a bit annoying because a lot of people probably just want Mythos. But to be fair to CA, I mean, the base game is pretty much the base for Mythos. They just added some extra units to it. So I don't think it's unfair of them to want you to buy the base game because it's not like it's Mythos is just 100% new stuff you know that they added out there maybe they should have offered it in a package where you could buy just the mythos expansion or something like that but i'm sure that ca would rather not and they just want both monies uh but anyway hey for anybody who's joining us you might be thinking air why is there a starting soon screen with a black square in the middle i'm updating my game 
Um, I thought the game was up to date and it was, but I was still on the press beta rather than the live build. And so it's taking just a few minutes to update. So hang in there. We'll be starting soon. Sorry I was late. Sorry, I don't have it loaded. I'll stick around a little later and make sure that you still get your two hours of stream time, okay? I won't cheat you all of any stream time. But um, I think I think Troy has... Here, here's a few things I'll say about Troy. So let's talk about the good, okay? The good. Um, the good for Troy is the map design is really excellent. The textures and graphics in the game are beautiful. Um, I, I think that the multiplayer in Troy is actually really quite fun. Um, it's kind of an undersung feature for a Total War game because it came late and it only came on Epic because the game was only on Epic. I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Troy performs well, like it's much smoother performing than, say, Warhammer, meaning like the frame rates are a lot smoother in Total War Troy, which I very much appreciate uh, because Total War games can sometimes perform very poorly. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of good things about Troy. Uh, there, there's definitely a lot of good things about it. Uh, things that I would come out and say downsides, biggest downside is that it was only on Epic. And let me flip back to the good things here real quick. At least it was free on Epic if you went and got it in like whatever that time frame was in the first, I don't remember, was it day or week? I don't remember. But if you went and got it, it was free on Epic. Downside is it was on Epic, and I never opened the Epic Games Store. <laughs> the only time I ever opened it was to play Troy. And because it was on the Epic Games Store, I ended up not playing Troy near as much. So anyway, that was a downside. I don't think they should have done the Epic exclusive, though I'm sure that monetarily speaking, it was probably better for CA to do the Epic exclusive. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of other downsides to Troy. Um, I mean, there's not a ton of factions. I would say the factions are probably going to feel pretty limited compared to, say, something like Warhammer. There is a decent diversity between the factions. Again, it's not going to feel as strong as Warhammer. It's not bad. You know what I mean? It's not bad. I just don't think that's the game's strong suit. Um, yeah, I think the campaign map in Troy is really pretty and really well done. I like the resource system in Troy with the four resources. I think it's kind of fun and unique. And you all get to see that here uh, at play tonight. So I don't know. I, I think there's ups and downs with Troy. Um, probably just depends on where it falls for you. I think it's a good Total War game. I think whether or not it's worth $60 is really a you question and not so much a me question because you know what your money's worth and I do not. Um, some people might say, well, would you buy it, Air? Well, yes, but that's kind of a bad comparison because Air buys literally every Total War game. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm the sucker. I'm going to go buy it regardless, <laughs> even if I probably shouldn't have. Um, I've got my sound turned on wrong. Give me just a second here to fix it. Uh, sound settings. All right, get my headset turned on. There we go, folks. We are in game. Welcome to Troy. Oh, another upside for Troy. The music is actually very excellent for this game too. It's got a it's got a very excellent soundtrack. And no, I'm not pitching that. That was just a total coincidence that they came up here trying to get you to uh, buy the soundtrack. So, anyway, yeah, I, I don't know. I think Troy is a good Total War game. I think part of the reason why it probably gets a bad rap is because it started out on um, Epic, and a lot of people just don't use Epic or don't like Epic. So, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, the, the, the uh, soundtrack is actually really excellent. Let's do a new campaign. We're, of course, going to do Mythological. I, this right here needs to be thrown in the garbage bin and burned because we don't know what this is. And just a little, little advice for CA, in my opinion. This whole, like, kind of half in history, half in mythology needs to just go. <laughs> just pick a lane. Either go full historical or mythological, or in the case of this game, offer both. You know what I mean? Just this stuff, stop. <laughs> this stuff in the middle, quit it. <laughs> you can do both or one or the other. And uh, But forget this stuff in the middle. I think it's a waste of time. I think this game either should have been historical from launch or it should have been mythical from launch. Uh, or, like, they have options now for both. You should have never had this lukewarm 
middle of the road kind of stuff that no one likes. My um, journey is long. All right, so I'm gonna play Odysseus. Um, Odysseus is my favorite faction uh, in the game. As far as favorite lords, I don't really have a favorite lord in this game, and lords in this game don't play near the same as they do for like legendary lords in Total War Warhammer 2, so I don't have near as much investment in which lord I choose. I'm more interested in the Are faction. And I really like gods? Ithaca as a faction. Or do we plead divine influence to justify our foolish choices? He's taken her! He's taken my wife! CA Discount Orlando Bloom. You've risked the safety of Troy. Troy is my home now. You have my oath, brother. She will be returned to you. Brother, I can fight! Go. Seek shelter. There'll be plenty of fighting ahead. I like that. It's like, hey, brother, just go hide in the closet, bro. I got the fighting. We know you're not going to be any good at that. <laughs> Helen's flight was a grave wound to Achaean pride. King Menelaus will have his revenge. And his brother will have his war with Troy, just as the gods intended. That's right, Legolas steals the ladies. All right, so we had an excellent question here from Marcus. Marcus, I'm going to answer your question, though it might get interrupted a little bit by like the talking on the campaign as they introduce us to it. Uh, but Marcus asked me, what do I like most about Ithaca? So let's let this guy give the oh, campaign intro, and then I'll answer that. There is only one response to Queen Helen's abduction, and that is war. Paris of Troy must pay! King Agamemnon of high-walled Mycenae must avenge this insult to his brother. Troy thinks to slight me, but they will pay the price. You are king of Ithaca and the master of deception. Wise and resourceful, great heroes like Achilles himself will take heed of your counsel. Each of Helen's original suitors must decide whether to honor their oath, calling on them to defend Helen's husband. The wine dark sea lures me from my home. The Teleboans. Once obedient to the kings of Ithaca, oh, they're going to be obedient again. Fortune as sea raiders. You need to put an end to their lawless ambitions. <laughs> Choose your allies wisely, and confront your enemies without fear. I love it. Daniel says needs more uh, Minoans, but then it would have to be rated M. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's good. I love the lame puns. Thank you, Daniel. All right, now to answer Marcus's question, what do I like most about Ithaca? Well, I kind of like their play style of, you know, if you want to, you can kind of just stick to the shorelines and conquer stuff. You can go inland. It's just that Ithaca, whenever they capture a settlement that doesn't have a port, it has very limited uh, building options. It's fine, you don't have to manage much. So Ithaca does better on the seas, which I kind of like because you can move around and do what you want if that's what you choose. You can still conquer inland. Um, there's just, obviously it's not worth as much as some of the stuff on the sea. The biggest thing that I really like about Ithaca is their units are a, um, a whole bunch of uh, vanguard deploy. Some of them even have stock and they, they carry javelins. They're a little bit lighter in terms of their melee, but their javelins can help make up for the damage. And so I really like their gameplay because it's very different. There's a lot of vanguard deploy shenanigans, and there's a lot of javelins on the battlefield. You and you all know that I like me some javelin use. day, or at least I hope you know that. Questionable, but effective. What does Outrider do? Increases the range of the army. Let's do that. Alright, so we gotta go fire our first battle here. With Odysseus. Chaos. Yeah, that's my that's why I like um Ithaca. Uh, they're definitely my favorite faction to play with. It's really the main faction I've played with. I've played a little bit with others. 
But I just, I really kind of took to Ithaca with all the javelins and the vanguard stuff. Like, it just felt the most at home for me. Charles, thanks for joining the uh, stream and everybody else who's here. We got a lot of folks here tonight. I guess people want to see what Troy's like. I could have covered this more up to the release, but I've been very busy trying to make other content. And I feel bad because some people might think, well, oh, Troy's not worth it. Well, Troy hasn't historically gotten a lot of views on my channel, so no, it hasn't been a great one for me to get to. Um, but I did want to cover this because I really do like the Mythos update, and I played a couple of battles with Appius and posted those. I had a lot of fun doing I hope to play more battles with Appius. Um, so one of these days, I'll uh, set up some multiplayer on a stream night with Appius and we'll play. Look at this map! These maps are absolutely gorgeous. Look at this! These maps are just so much better. Look, they've got forest, mud... And then there's, like, road, you know, that comes through. There'll be sand sometimes. Like, it really is a good uh, game in many ways, right? So I think this game gets a bad rap sometimes. And I think it's probably a lot to do with two things. If I had to take a guess, one would be the fact that it launched on the Epic Store. <laughs> and two would be the fact that it... Um, uh, let's see, that it launched on the Epic Store, and two would be the fact that it was like this kind of bland halfway between reality and myth, rather than just being one or the other. I think most players are either interested in having a mythology type game, or they're interested in just having a historical game. This one now offers both, which I like, and I think it's fine for CA to offer both. Um, so, I, yeah, again, I think that's okay, if that's what they so choose. They've also got some sirens of their own. Y'all want to see the sirens up close? This is one of the new... Well, these, this unit was in the truth behind the myth, but they were just kind of boring. The slingers. Now they're like these flying chicken ladies slinging stuff at you. Again, this game has really gorgeous graphics. It is really a beautiful game. Like, look at this. Look at that lighting and stuff. I really hope... I mean, in Warhammer 3, I got to play it in an early battle... And it looks good. Like, Warhammer 3 looks really good. Um, it better darn well look good. <laughs> you know, I want it to look really good. I, I love Warhammer 2, obviously even more so than this game. But um, I expect that Warhammer... Like, I mean, th this game looks way... I mean, I remember when this game first came out, a lot of people were, like, trashing them. Like, oh, the graphics look so crappy. And I'm like, dude, I don't know if you've been paying attention to Warhammer 2. Like, don't get me wrong. Warhammer 2 is a beautiful game, but it's starting to show its age. <laughs> It is definitely starting to show its age. And uh, this game has some updates and stuff into it that really make a big difference in the looks of the game. Yeah, I won't play the game in historical mode. I'm only interested in the mythology mode. Like, I have no interest in a pure history title during this time period. Or like, for instance, during uh, the uh, Three Kingdoms. I would have no interest in just a purely historical approach to Three Kingdoms. So I, I didn't really mind Three Kingdoms being a little bit of a mixture of um, of reality and uh, you know, kind of f fanciful uh, fighting and stuff. Like, So I didn't mind the way the Three Kingdoms was. Your it, it, it was kind of between both worlds. But honestly, Romance Mode in Three Kingdoms was never intended to be a realistic or historical mode. So I didn't mind the way Three Kingdoms was done because it kind of just embraced the fiction of that time period. But um, in this game, like I feel attack. like when it launched, they just they wouldn't embrace the fiction of this time period, <laughs> and instead they only wanted to um, only wanted to deal with just you know the the kind of real stuff. I wasn't a big fan. Oh look at this! See, look at this effect. We have an effect: Sirens Lure. It berserked our unit. So the sirens have that special ability. Look, see my guys hurling their um, javelins up into the sirens. This again, one of the reasons why I really like Ithaca. Their units are just unique, and these ambushers, like exemplary ambushers and other units we get, they're just really good units. I enjoy it a lot. Look at them running away from me. It's funny. I'm gonna take my heavy sword skirmishers and try and bash their archer uh, general, and I'm gonna bring my lighter sword units and try and catch up with their young spears and just pull through, come on, go through. 
So like, for instance, this terrain right here, this terrain would really bog down chariots. This kind of muddy, mucky terrain. No Whereas a light unit like this sword skirmisher, and you can tell it's light because of the, uh, the icon class here, that circle. This light unit continues to move quickly um, across this type of terrain. But like heavy cavalry, chariots, heavy infantry, they get more bogged down in this type of terrain. And so, again, I think it's something that makes uh, the gameplay in Troy actually pretty enjoyable. Pretty enjoyable. Now, Odysseus is an archer hero. I mean, just from what I found, and I'm, I'm no expert in this game, archer heroes are best used to shoot at infantry because their arrows are kind of like a uh, ballista bolt, meaning that they can pierce more than one unit and uh, cause a lot of damage. Uh, javelins are similar to other Total War games in the sense that they are a short range but much higher damage missile. And uh, they can they have good armor piercing damage too. And so javelins, again, limited range. However, they do very high damage compared to other missiles. So I very much like um, javelin units. You can see I have an exemplary ambusher. Yeah, they have more range. Or it looked like they have more range. Okay, they don't. It was just positioning. Uh, you can see the exemplary ambusher and the ambusher and kind of some of the differences in their stats here. Got better morale, better melee defense, attack, weapon damage. Their javelins are similar, but they uh, they come with this additional snipe ability, so if they're hidden, they can stay hidden while they throw their javelins. I find javelins to be pretty good, too, at dealing a lot of damage to an enemy lord. So when you get bogged down on an enemy lord, javelins can be a nice way to just, like, pull apart their hit points in a big hurry. So watch, I'll go show you. But anyway, hopefully that gives you all a little insight. You can see here the different um, icon on the heavy sword skirmishers. They're actually a, uh, uh, a heavy weight class unit. And you can tell by the shape of their icon there, that um, octagon. Or, sorry, hexagon. It's not an octagon. My bad. Get my, uh... Get my shapes confused. Their lord got his, uh, Artesia, or whatever it's called. Aristia. Sorry, not Artesia. Aristia? Aristia? So, he got to heal. So, I'm gonna have to tear him up. I'm gonna bring my slingers. Yeah, see how quickly those javelins started to punch a hole in his armor when we got close enough? He's got a little bit of cover here in the trees. But uh, we're going to give this guy an early Javelin Day celebration. And it's going to hurt him a lot. Yeah, you can see the Javelins there. Despite um, this being kind of a hero unit, he uh going to take a lot of damage. <laughs> All the Javelins like stuck in his arm, stuck in his bow. It's good stuff. All right, we're just waiting to finish this guy off. Hey, clone trooper. He says, mmm, gold. <laughs> Thanks, clone trooper. Appreciate the thousand yen. You are far too kind. Clone trooper, by the way, in case you all were wondering, he, he is the best clone trooper. I mean, you've heard of Rex and you've heard of Cody. And then all those other nameless clones. Well, Rex and Cody are nothing compared to this guy. Clone Trooper Wheeler is the best. If you're ever going to have a clone trooper by your side, or if you're a Jedi, and, and you need a clone trooper to just kill you quickly and cleanly during Order 66 with no hard feelings, it's definitely Clone Trooper. I know that one day when I have to go, Clone Trooper is just going to Order 66 me real quick and clean. So anyway, he's, he's the guy that, that I want by my side. So appreciate it, Clone Trooper. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Just just hold off on that Order 66 as long as you can. I'm kind of enjoying life. Hard work wins renown. All right, so good stuff. Picked up some uh, food and bronze as a reward for completing that mission. Now, the economy, and again, I'm not an expert at this, but I'll, I'll give you all a breakdown that should be helpful for beginners and other people who are thinking about getting started here. Um, so there's four resources in the Troy campaign. You have food, which is kind of like just money in general, right? So food is, just kind of consider food kind of like your standard currency that would have been in any other Total War game. 
meaning that most of your upkeep and cost for things is going to come from food. Wood is an is something that you typically will use when upgrading uh, structures or settlements and stuff like that. Same with stone. Um, it's something that's more akin to being used with like higher tier uh, building upgrades and stuff like that. Um, and then bronze is kind of like a special resource. Did I say four resources because I meant five, sorry. Uh, bronze is a resource that is common sometimes in a building upgrade, but definitely going to be um, useful for trying to get like higher tier troops. Bronze is the way that the game limits you uh, in, in a way from just like spamming out elite feet. stacks of units over and over again, because elite units will require bronze to both recruit and upkeep. And you have to have a pretty good size empire to support like whole armies worth of bronze, you know, using units. So so that's kind of how it plays in. And then gold is kind of like your ultimate check and balance. Um, there's only so much gold on the map and there's only so much gold you can get in the game. And the most expensive units and building upgrades will typically require gold, which the player typically takes a little time before they can get built up to. And so in that regard, gold is kind of, again, like a gate to help Thank keep you, the, the player from snowballing too much or too easy. So that's kind of a breakdown of these different resources. So there's five resources. Um, your technology is actually up here in the Royal Decrees. Again, this is if people aren't familiar with the game. There's some techs I like to go after first. Um, you can see we already have this wood tech, which is giving us 100 wood per turn. There's one for food, which gives us food faction-wide. There's one for stone, which gives us stone faction-wide. There's one for gold, which does the same. Bronze. Um, I mean, gold is a pretty valuable resource, and when you get 20 per turn, I kind of like to do this one first um, because it's one of the things that we're not going to have a lot of access to early. So I'm going to go ahead and start researching this treasure hall so that we can get 20 gold per turn. That becomes a very important long-term... Uh, income source for us on gold. Now there is gold mines, like here. here's one right up here in Barakos. Uh, we'll definitely want to go get a hold of that. Well, that was like the most... Um... All right, um, the stream just got a little bit crazy on us. <laughs> Trying to see if it'll smooth out. Are you all seeing this fine on your end? I don't know what's going on. Like, it looks very choppy on my um, capture software, but it doesn't. Like, the bitrate looks okay on the capture software. It's very weird. We battled through. Yeah, it got laggy for a minute. Is it back to normal? What the heck's up? Why is the quality only at 360? Y'all tell me if it cleans up, okay? I'm trying to see what's going on here. The bit rates look normal for me. It's weird though, because I'm getting 118 FPS on my... on my computer. But for some reason, it's only outputting 30 frames per second? See what's I don't know what's going on. It's really strange. Quality's good. Yeah, hold on. I'm I'm just uh I'm trying to check something out real quick. That's so weird. It's not quite getting come our way. something really weird's going on. Like, and I don't was the stream fine back at the beginning. It's actually not my internet, believe it or not. Cox is not the one to blame at the moment. Was it? 
Was it smooth back in the beginning? Can you all help me answer that question real quick so I can try and troubleshoot this better? What, were the frame rates nice and smooth in the beginning? Like, because we're not dropping anything bitrate wise. Like, my, my internet speed is good. What's weird is that it's calling my stream quality low, but when I tab out to go look and see what's making it low, it's like, oh no, it's fine. Everything's back to normal. But then when I tab back into the game, it goes back down. So I can't figure out. I don't know what's going on. It's the weirdest thing. It just says my stream is experiencing issues. It doesn't tell me what the issue is. My CPU is only running at like 5%, so I know it's not the CPU. Prepare the victory feast. I, I'm like literally sitting at like two frames a second right now. I have no idea what's going on. Hey, thanks, Clone Trooper. It says, it says Milano Kada uh, Kadado. Your stream is now potato. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to make it a potato. Thanks for the 500 yen. Appreciate it, Clone Trooper. It's not YouTube. It's something going on with my broadcasting software. Um. Give me just a second. I'm going to try something. Performance, uh, CPU. Let's take a look at something here. I'm going to look at my CPU performance. I'm in game. Whenever Troy was first released and we got to test it out, it was like super CPU heavy. Yeah, it's not my CPU, so that is not the issue. Let me try and restart my streaming software and see if that helps. Um, so give me just a second. Oh, silver tongued Odysseus, there is only one response to Queen Helen's abduction, and that is war. All right, so I'm rebooted. And the problem's still there. Like, I should be outputting at 60 frames. We're not outputting at 60 frames. I do not know what's going on because it was working just fine when we started the stream. So, let me just, let me try one other thing real quick. Um, I could try, um, let's see. Go. Um, I'm going to stop streaming for just one second and try and change and All right, well, I changed my stream encoder from my processor over to my graphics card. It's still not quite doing what I want it to. It should be streaming at 60 FPS, and it's just not, and it won't tell me why. <laughs> I don't have a CPU usage issue. I don't have a GPU usage issue, nor should I. But it just, it will not push 60 frames a second for some reason, even though I'm getting, I'm getting 122 frames a second out of my graphics card and it won't capture, like it won't even capture at a fixed rate. Like it's bouncing up and down depending on what I'm doing. I know it's decent, but um, 
really frustrating. I want to know why it won't work. Like, I didn't have any trouble recording Troy on these same s settings, and I didn't have any trouble streaming it earlier, so I don't understand why it would not work at... Is anybody still here? <laughs> Did I lose the whole audience? All right, if anybody's out there, please say something in the chat. Okay, I managed to keep like two people probably. I have no idea what went wrong. Like literally no idea. Um, OBS was completely fritzed out. I restarted. OBS completely crapped out again. I restarted again, and this time to try and prevent OBS from freaking out again, I, instead of trying to tell it to capture the specific of application world. of Troy, I just set it to screen capture. <laughs> Silver tongue so I'm just capturing distance. my screen. It says 60 FPS down at the bottom. Hopefully nothing craps out. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of... Well, the nice thing about OBS, and yes, it does feel like BS right now, Silerius, <laughs> is that OBS is free. So I will give them that. And typically, it's very excellent and free. Oh, it, silver it just started it again. Distance. Like, as soon as I get loaded into the campaign map, to Queen I, I was capturing 60 and FPS, and as soon as you hit the campaign map, it just tanks. I do not understand. It's down at 30 now, even though I'm, I'm getting 120 FPS. <laughs> OBS is just, like, crapped out. I, I don't know how to fix this. That is three restarts. I've changed multiple settings, like how I'm doing the capture, how I'm encoding the video. I've double checked all my software and temperatures. Nothing is overheating. All my hardware is working fine. I've captured this game many, many times before and never had an issue. And for some reason, partway into my stream tonight, <laughs> there's an issue. I, I have. No clue why. And it's amazing that it actually isn't Cox's fault for once. It's it's actually for once in a lifetime not the fault of my internet provider. I am... I, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> Gonna stay streaming and try a few things. I don't know that these few things are super likely to work, but what else to do other than try? Like this, I can actually get a capture going, but OBS won't take 60 frames per second for some reason. Try a different game to see if it happens. That's an excellent idea. As long as you all can be patient with me here, I'll try a few things. We'll work together. We'll see what we can get. Let me start up a different game. Let's fire up Warhammer 2 and see if the same thing happens. Um, really, really weird. I had an issue capturing Troy, but this was over a year ago when it very first launched, and the game that CA gave us would run your processor like flat out, all cores, 100%. And I had a capture issue because my processor is what does my encoding for me, and since it was running 100% on Troy, it wasn't able to capture right, so I had to change my capture settings, but then as soon as they released like a a build that was like closer to release, it never did that again. Or seen such a thing. Alright, so Warhammer right now is capturing at 60 FPS, but let's load into a campaign map. Let's see for sure. Oh. So, 
So far, so good. But it, Troy was also giving me 60 frames a second on the menu screens. And it was as soon as I hit an actual in-game screen that it started giving me crap. Um, I need to load a new campaign because I don't have my mods on. Yeah, sure. To start it. I'm not trying to play Warhammer for those who are here. I'm trying to play Troy, but we are having technical difficulties with my broadcaster, and so I'm doing some troubleshooting to determine if it is the game screwing with OBS, if it's just OBS. So I'm just bug testing here by loading up into Warhammer to see if I get the same behavior that I did in Troy so that I can at least maybe start to zero in on what the problem is in some desperate hope of fixing it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Apologies, this is quite the mess. The weird thing is, is that my game is running really good. Like, Troy's running 120 so, FPS, like, looking good, running good. Yeah, Warhammer's capturing 60 FPS, no issues. So it's definitely some kind of issue that OBS is having with Troy. How weird. So, I mean, this is just smooth as can be, nothing wrong. Yeah, it's just camping out on 60 frames. For whatever reason, Troy is really messing with me. Something, any full screen application, capture specific window. Let's see if I capture done. Add back over. Yeah, I just don't have anywhere near the same issue with, with Warhammer 2. I don't know, let's... Exit to Windows. Try Troy again. Screen application. All right, let's try Troy again. See what happens. And we get lucky. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not on Windows 11, Sinchi. Apparently, Windows 11 is going to be some kind of insider party with Intel, and I don't run an Intel processor, so I'm not keen. To, uh, to switch to Windows 11. I can try changing the settings in Troy. That's a good option. Yeah, let's let's tinker with the graphics settings and see if it makes any difference. The weird thing is, is it shouldn't make a difference because I'm outputting 125, 126 frames per second right now in Troy, so there is definitely no issue with the amount of frames per second coming out from Troy, but my, like, even right now, it's capturing at 35 frames a second, when in Warhammer it was constantly between like 55 and 60, where it should be. But right here, it's only capturing 30, 30, 35 frames, and sometimes it dips even lower. And it's not that big a deal, like 30 FPS is doable, but it's bad, and there's no reason for it. <laughs> like, so, really frustrating. Um, I don't know, let's just stick to, like, the high preset and see what happens. See if there's any differences whatsoever. Now, that is interesting. Now it's doing 60 FPS. What? I'm running 255 frames a second. Earlier I was running 120. It, it shouldn't create a difference in capturing at 60 frames per second whether I'm running at 120 or 250. I'm so confused right now, folks. Like, I am so confused. But hey, if we find something that works, I'm gonna do it. So, let's... Let's try again. Uh... I don't know, let's just let's switch over to Ultra again and see what happens. Just to confirm. Yeah! I can make 
your enemies. Again, I'm pushing 130 FPS, but it's only capturing at 47. Very, very strange. Okay, well, we at least found something that can make the difference. I'm just gonna swallow my pride here, even though I should be able to run this no problem on Ultra. We're gonna we're gonna swallow the pride, run it on high, and just move along. All right, so let's try and start playing Troy again, shall we? I mean, that's that's why we came here in the first place, and I've we had the most viewers I've had on a stream in quite a long time, and now that we've lost. 50% of those <laughs> due to my technical difficulties that came about for no apparent reason. Oh, I know graphics aren't everything, and honestly, there's probably very little difference between high and ultra. It's just very odd. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just strange. Uh, Auto-resolve this, because I already played it. Auto-resolve's probably going to screw me over, though. I'm just glad some of you all stuck with me tonight, so thank you for sticking with me, and thank you for the folks throwing productive ideas at me on different things to try here. We found something that at least has temporarily solved the solution, so there's there's something happening between OBS and Troy when I'm running on Ultra that's causing the game to not capture right, and I really don't know why. I, I can't understand why, I can't explain why but Retreat. it's happening. Great deeds. So, we will just right work around it, folks. We will just work around it. I'm gonna train some more sword skirmishers. Thanks for sticking with me, folks. Thank you. If you don't want your PC, I'll have it. Oh no, I very much want my PC. It's, it's just that it's a little frustrating because I've, I've paid out the nose specifically to make sure that you all get the highest quality settings that I can give you on a video so that it will be, you know, the best looking and stuff like that. Like, I specifically spent a lot of money because video quality is important to me. And again, there's not a big difference between high and ultra. We're going to live. Everything's going to be just fine here. But it's frustrating when you spend the money on it and it should be working and, like, it... You're looking at your game, and it's totally running fine in terms of frame rates, but software decides to just say, hey, screw you. <laughs> I'm not playing along. So, anyway, here we are. We're back. Let's let's quit talking about computers, and let's talk about Troy. We were having a fun conversation about Troy earlier, anyway. That was just very, very odd. There's some graphics setting that's obviously doing it. I, I will tinker next time I'm not streaming. I'll tinker around in Troy with a test stream and see if I can figure out what graphic setting is actually doing it. And then maybe we can just specifically adjust that one setting that's causing the problem. And then I can maybe report it to CA and, or, I don't know, someone and see if we can do anything about it because it's very strange. So we can uh, get the cheat Hades ability or the lead by example ability. Lead by example makes my allies a little stronger for 90 seconds. Uh, cheat Hades makes us faster and gives us damage resistance. I'm going to go with that one because as an archer lord, it can be pretty important for us to run away when necessary. All right, so we've given Odysseus his skill point. I'm going to go ahead and grab some more uh, sword skirmishers. We're gonna need as many troops as we can get here. Construction available. I don't mind doing some construction on the ports. I'm waiting to build this building here, which I need stone for. So I'm not gonna build this, because, uh, wait and get the one that I want. Let's go ahead and build up the port at Ithaca. And let's end our turn. You think Mythos should be free since it's basically the full version of Truth Behind the Myth? Um, no, I don't think Mythos should be free per se, because they had to make new units and change some stuff up in the game mode and add in all the missions and write oh up all the missions and do all the other stuff, so I don't, I don't think it should be free. Um, I think some people who just want to play Mythos might be frustrated that they have to buy the base game which is all about truth behind the myth, which they don't want. 
However, most of the assets that are used here in the Mythos mode come from Truth Behind the Myth. I don't know. It's a tough balance. What do you all think? What do you all think about it? It's an interesting question. JR Gamer says I wouldn't try multiplayer. There's no lobbies. Um, for this game, there's no lobbies. I haven't tried multiplayer on this one except for just like, you know, multiplayer with friends. So I haven't tried ladder or anything. Yeah, you all tell me what you think in regards to that question. Your warriors have spotted oh boy. Force. Boy, right on top of them. Game should have been Mythos from the start. Now there's a statement I absolutely agree with. 100%. Yeah, this game should have been Mythos mode from the start, with historical as an option, and truth behind the myth should have never been a thing. That's my opinion on that. That's a good way to simplify it, I like it. Alright, so my sword skirmishers are light, and I like using them to chase off skirmishers. They're light infantry that can get around pretty well. I don't really want to be fighting this lord in melee, so I'm going to run away from him and try and put some javelins in his back. Give him the old javelin in the spine treatment. Crushed his infantry. And that should pretty much break this army. He's taking too much missile damage. There we go. So their slingers are the only units left, and I think we'll get I think we'll get the power bar route here any moment now. Yep, there we go. Army losses kicked in. Some people are saying, yeah, mythos from the start. Total war. Truth behind the myth is like the flea market version of mythos. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, I mean. I didn't like the truth behind the myth thing. I think the game had a lot of admirable stuff in it, even though I didn't like truth behind the myth. I think the game had, you know, interesting features with the way they really diversified infantry weights, or just unit weight in general between light, medium, heavy, very heavy, stuff like that. Uh, the maps were good. All that stuff was there in truth behind the myth, and all that stuff was good in truth behind the myth, but truth behind the myth was bad. <laughs> like that, that's my opinion on truth behind the myth. Like, I don't want a guy dressed up. Oh, look, we got uh, Procris's spear here. We don't have any spear units in the army, but hey, we get to buff their attack. And we snagged our first settlement here. I'm, I'm just glad we're streaming, folks. After all that mess, I'm just glad we're streaming. <laughs> it's, it's no longer truth behind the myth, and we're streaming, so win-win. Again, I'm not going to be doing that construction yet, because I'm going to save up stone and get this one. Alright. Let's end our turn. After battle scene, OT uh, bloodier. Yeah. Yeah, the after battle scenes are kind of funny. Sometimes you can see straight up their man skirt, too. And um, thankfully, CA didn't make those models anatomically correct, or I don't know, maybe you aren't thankful because you did want to see a, you know, whatever you call that. I, I'm calling it a man skirt. Whatever, I'm sure it has a real name, but um, yeah. Shining Odysseus. All right, so I'm gonna sail out here and try and take this last settlement at Hyrie. Uh, again, we're waiting for stone because I want to build this option here, and it's gonna take me quite a few turns to get the stone I need. Uh, but we can go ahead and upgrade this port here, because that just requires wood, and we have enough wood. Skip that in another turn. Marcus says, eek, don't want to see that. Yeah, I mean, hey, to each their own. 
Personally, though, I don't want to see F. Odysseus or any other persons on here, man skirt or woman skirt. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. But like I said, to each their own. Maybe, maybe that's a feature. Maybe that should be a graphics feature. You know, they have blood and gore mode, and then you have upskirt mode. All right. Sorry, I had to get rid of the uh, bot spammer who was pestering us. Wow, it's been that kind of night, huh? First, I've got issues trying to broadcast right, and then we got a bot spammer after us too. We're just gonna have a uh, gonna have a night on our hands here. It says we're going to take a lot of losses here. That makes absolutely no sense. Oh, this is the uh, Griffin army. Sweet. We're going to take on this Griffin army. They don't actually have any Griffin units, but these are all the support units that come with the Griffin. So let's take them on. Yeah, someone there was getting some pretty aggressive spam there. I don't know what language that was, but... <laughs> Definitely some aggressive spam. Good news is, is that uh, I get very little spam. So that's that's the first spammer I've had to take out, and and heck, I don't even remember when. It's been a long time. So that's good. Let's hope we don't make a habit of it. Oh, they're back. New spam account. There we go. And another spammer. No doubt they'll be back. It's just going to be that kind of night, huh? All right, let's start the battle. Your warriors have spotted I mean, foes. I have to admit, it's a little weird. If you got time to come spam some random YouTuber, you got too much time. <laughs> you should be putting those skills to use in some other way that's actually useful. Oh, there they're back again. Alright, here we go. Your warriors are losing heart. Masters of war! All right, we're doing some major damage to their lord. Warriors are losing heart. Why did we lose heart? Wow, are we really getting our butt kicked right here? Kind of feels like it. The foe has sighted your hidden units. Um, yeah, I've got their lord on the run. We ended up routing that unit there. Let's use our javelins to go after this skirmisher cavalry. Victory is close enough to taste. Right, let's see if we can kill some of the skirmisher cav. All right. Alright, so I've got... We just gotta finish this up here. I have moderators, for those of you talking about I need a moderator. I have multiple moderators, just none of them are here tonight. But hey, just try and ignore the stupid spammer. They want the attention, just ignore them. I'll get rid of the comments as best I can, just ignore them. 
Don't don't give them any of the attention that they so desperately crave. This army was stronger than I expected. Hades has claimed the enemy hero. Okay. There we go. So we got the enemy hero. That's gonna break the rest of their troops. Let's go ahead and end the battle. All right, so we've got extra food we're going to pick up there. Yeah, the dolphins are coming. That's right. Beware the dolphins. We defeat the following hero's army in battle. We defeated it, so that is good stuff. Hey, sweet. Looks like Warner's in here getting some people. Thanks, Warner. Appreciate it. Warner's one of my mods. Warner is bringing the pancake hammer. Favored by Athena. Um, let's see. Purge has begun. <laughs> Thanks, Warner. Yeah, when we do get... It's rare that I've ever had spammers like that, but when we do, um, obviously it's great when you all let me know about it and you let one of the mods know about it, but if they keep coming back like that with bot accounts, the best thing we can do is just ignore them and either, um, either myself or one of the mods will just kind of quietly get rid of them and we just don't want to give them any attention. So, we'll just ignore him as best we can. Victory has come our way. Odysseus of Ithaca. All right, so... What else we want to do here? So our stone, like, I want to build... This one for stone, too, which also requires stone. <laughs> Just hopping on the stream after I saw Troy was released on uh, Steam. Had mixed reviews. Think it's worth buying. Uh, what were people saying in the mixed reviews? Out of curiosity. Um, I wonder why the reviews were mixed, is what I should say. What were people's reasoning in the negative reviews? I talked a little bit earlier. Oh, it'll be hard to go rewatch the stream um, because of all the technical difficulties that I had. But I talked a little bit earlier about what I thought some of the ups and downs of Troy are. Watch this, folks. I'm going to make a safe haven. It's like a special building that you can make in an enemy settlement. And then I can use use it to recruit troops. <laughs> Pretty sweet, huh? I'm gonna grab some extra troops from the safe haven. Uh, there's no special recruitment that I can do right now because by winning that battle, we can recruit this lesser griffin, but it takes gold, and we just don't have enough gold yet. So I'm gonna use this um, camp to replenish and then grab some new troops. And what I'll do is just merge these trashed units I and we'll put these new ones in that way my units will be looking replenished I have an unassigned skill point for our well, spy here agents movement range success chance replenishment rates uh, let's go down this road here and another turn here 
So hang on, it says, uh, I heard a lot of hate for Troy and Steam saying it's really buggy and other problems with those people don't even play two hours. Um, I, I've probably played like, I'd say 10 or 12 hours in the early access on Steam. And I didn't have any issues with bugs and stuff. Now that said, I have one machine, one hardware type. Uh, I do not want their offer here, so decline. Um, they're trying to get me to give them stone, but I need stone. So, no. Thanks, Warner. Appreciate you dropping in. Um, so, yeah. I Bugs, I mean, that's a hit and miss thing, right? There could be some kind of hardware or software on your machine that causes a lot of bugs. That can totally be a thing sometimes. Gosh, we're up against some uh, spears. Rather large army. I don't know if we can win this or not, but we're going to try. Lord Uthrid says, honestly, kind of just waiting on Warhammer 3. When do you think it's going to release? Well, it's September. CA told us we get some news in a couple months. It has only just been a couple of months. We have no news. <laughs> um, don't want my honest opinion. I, I Listen, I want to be wrong, and I very well could be wrong. I have no insider information. I think Warhammer 3 is not going to make it out this year. <laughs> I think if Warhammer 3 were going to release this year, it would have already had a release date. It doesn't have a release date. Something is delaying them, be my guess. I don't know what. I don't think Warhammer 3 is coming this year. And I've kind of been keeping my mindset that way, just in case. That way I don't get upset and disappointed. But yeah, I don't think it's coming. I think it'll come next year. I think Creative Assembly, like a lot of companies, has suffered delays on quite a few things because of you know, the whole pandemic shift in business. We need to try and hurry and defeat our enemies here, and the sad part is, is that their infantry is probably as good or better than mine in melee. I can't really hit their lord right now either. But yeah, so I want them to make sure that Warhammer 3 is ready for release. Losing heart. I don't want anything rushed. So I want them to do it right. If they need to delay it, I want them to delay it. Obviously, I'd rather have the game right now because, you know, I'm selfish and I want the game right now. Wow, we are going to get absolutely shellacked here. My uh, lighter sword skirmishers are just not the kind of units that we need for this battle. I think we're going to lose. Yeah, there's definitely no way we're winning this. They've got reinforcements on top of it all. I can't fire while moving, like in a 360 arc with Odysseus, so there's not even really an option to... to, like, just kite them to death with Odysseus, because he doesn't have a 360 arc of fire for some reason. I guess that's just a Warhammer thing. My medium... Or my heavy sword skirmishers are much more well suited here. My light sword skirmishers just don't have the melee prowess. They're just more of a flanking unit. Unidentified Leviathan says, Air of Carthage, are there normal units alongside with monsters in this game mode? Yes. That's yeah, normal units alongside mythical ones. Yeah, we're going to lose this, so let's concede this and just go rebuild our army the right way. We need a better army. This one is not suited for the task at hand. We would need either a lot more troops or better troops because our, our light sword skirmishers um, are just not suited to that combat there. I do have the game settings up a little higher too. Uh, I'm not giving you any barters. Sam Badger says... Uh, delayed game better than bad game. I agree. Um, definitely would rather have a delayed game than a bad Those game. Who oppose me meet so Odysseus is wounded. I'm gonna have to raise a new army at Ithaca. Root hero. This whole motivation system is something I'm not a huge fan of. You have to see what drives this character. 
to see like it says adventurer um compassionate this stuff gets a little too far for me like i i don't really like this stuff a bunch like having to deal with this but it is what it is it's in the game so like this guy gets more motivation when he's sacking and raising he loses motivation when Hera is respected, and if he ends the turn in an own province with a negative populace, like, I mean, they're so very specific, and you have to try and remember all these. That's why I don't really like these motivation things. Like, there's too much to remember, and it's just kind of dumb. So, I'm, I'm, I, I get where they were going with this. I just don't like the way it was implemented. So, this is one of those things that I'm actually not a big fan of this game. doesn't really matter because we're not going to keep this character for very long, so I'm just going to grab a character. Because we're just waiting for Odysseus to come back anyway, and it doesn't really matter. War is my business. What we do need to do is upgrade here, but we don't have the population surplus yet. We only have one turn to a surplus. Uh, we can go ahead and recruit some light units just in case. I hate that I lost those As you say. good skirmishers we started with, though. That's probably one of the most frustrating things to me. Questionable, but effective. Sickness ends many ambitions. Try and poison the well over there, get a little bit of revenge. <laughs> Lord Uthrid says, what should motivate the character is when they don't piss off air. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Uh, what does motivation do? So that's a good question from Andrew. Like, if the character's motivation gets too low, it causes issues. I don't remember if it makes them, like, rebel or anything like that, but the motivation needs to be high. It may just play into their combat capabilities. Look at this. Because we lost Odysseus and now our faction's weak, like, we're going to get weird wars declared on us. And again, this has a lot to do with the fact that the AI, like, I'm on a hard game setting, so the AI's like, oh, hey, a weak person. Let's take advantage of them. So that's exactly what they're doing. Because we're we're fellow Achaeans, but they're just declaring war on me because I'm weak and I'm nearby, <laughs> and they want my territory. But we made some mistakes. We should not have gotten ahead of ourselves with that army. I've, I've typically had decent success trying to do that, so I didn't expect to run into the mess that we did right there. But we did. <laughs> so it is what it is. We'll deal with it and move along. All right, so agent. No. Your enemies will fall. Their greed will be to failure. So we are not succeeding. We're upgrading our settlement, which means I can get the upgrade barracks, and then we can get heavy sword skirmishers who will fight much, much better. I'm not interested in your barters right now, so please leave me alone. I wish there's like an option also where you could set it to like, hey, no resource barters. Like I'm not interested and resource partners. Like, I'm not doing it right now. Like, I wish there was a, a setting where you could check it off, because every turn in has a bunch of people begging you for resources. Sometimes it's kind of helpful. Sometimes they're good, but, like, right now, I, I'm just not interested. So I wish that you could just tell them to, to cram it with walnuts and keep it to themselves. So we're still three turns from completing this. Again, that's going to give me access to the heavy sword skirmishers. And we really need some heavies. If I hadn't lost my better sword skirmishers and my ambushers, Those who probably could have gotten away with a little bit here, but we did. Poison is a subtle weapon. It's a subtle weapon you're not any good at. I live for battle. I'm just going to get some light sword skirmishers for the time being, because we need to have something in case we get attacked. So let's just get our way through here. The five resources in this game really makes you think a lot before building or recruiting. Uh, I I like it. I don't know if it needs to be added to, say, like, Warhammer. It could, maybe, uh, do something with, like, different stuff in Warhammer and make it a little different faction by faction. Um, but, like, I don't know that they need that kind of complexity in the Warhammer campaign because you already have other complexities in the Warhammer campaign um, that make it interesting, in my opinion. They're going to offer me 52 gold for 331 bronze. And 52 gold is pretty nice. Why is he so desperate for bronze? 
Uh, you know what? I'll do it because I think I'm going to have access to more bronze here soon. Okay, so this is why I was building the army, even though it was light troops. Yeah, see, look, someone else going to declare war on me because we're weak right now. See, we're at strength rank 88. Part of me wants to just start the campaign over and do it right, so we don't have to do this, but I'll try and live with it. We're going to start getting attacked by absolutely everybody and their dog because we don't have Odysseus and because our army got beat up. pledge my loyalty. Odysseus is still wounded for one more turn. Yeah, we're in pretty big dookie. We're in a pretty good pile of crap here. Might still be able to dig our way out of it, though. Make this come to I want that one. I want this one. Some gold per turn. War makes the man. I can pick up this uh, griffin now. It's pretty expensive upkeep. Pretty really expensive upkeep, but it could be very handy. Oh yeah, it's very expensive upkeep, but... Fighting for air. I agree. The griffin is the same upkeep as five sword skirmishers. I know some people are okay with me restarting, and I might, but let's see if we can dig our way out real quick. Let's see if we can dig our way out. Sometimes this stuff happens. We're gonna lose some before we gain any back, for sure. We got a lot of enemies nipping at us here. But when you get put in this position, the AI is very, very, very likely to attack you whenever your faction rank gets really low. We were all the way down to 80-something. We're all the way back up to 40-something now. But it's too late. They've declared war. So now we kind of just have to deal with it. All right, Odysseus is back. Odysseus back in our army. Shining Odysseus. For some reason why it takes me multiple turns to get over here now. Maybe I shouldn't rush over there. I'm gonna lose all of our food production though if I don't. Prepare to march. Shining Odysseus. Land ahoy! Alright, there I can try and protect my settlement here. From these losers. Maybe they'll that sail off. They might go back and try and attack Ithaca. I'm not sure what kind of garrison we have in Ithaca. It's really crappy, in fact. Really crappy. Well, that's good. Why is my Ithaca garrison, like, equally bad as all the other small ones? That doesn't make any sense. I guess I need to put the right buildings in to make it a little better, but it just seems really bad. I'm going to save some food because I might need some here soon, so let's I can be most just not even mess with that guy either. I don't really have the, uh, the time for it. Let's move God's this way. Alright, go ahead and move him up. Let's see what this army does. This guy wants stone. They'll give me gold in exchange. I... I think I might need my stone soon, so no thanks. Am I enjoying this verse historical? I haven't even touched the historical version, and I won't. Uh, Menelaus wants a military alliance, and for some reason they want it so bad that they're going to give me food? Uh, I mean, I'm down. I'm down, because I could use his help right now. Our strength rank is back up a lot, too. So if we can just fight people off for a little while, for some reason Menelaus all of a sudden wanted to be my friend, which is great, because now I don't have to worry about Sparta attacking me too. All 
Alright, they went to siege Ithaca instead. We got enemies up all over the place. I hate this. Like, he's right here, but I can't attack him because, like, it blocks my path. On... Ever Get him! Yeah, you're going down. Going down. I think Menelaus might be predisposed to like Odysseus. That's possible, but Menelaus has attacked me many times when I've been playing campaigns that I wasn't filming. So I'm a little bit surprised to see him being my friend, especially right now when so many people turned against us. But a lot of the people that turned against us, we've already we've already turned our um, public or our uh, power rating around. I'm gonna send Odysseus up a flank to start shooting infantry. I'm gonna charge my lesser griffin straight at their fighter ravager. The gods smile. Reinforcements are here. We got reinforcements coming up too, so let's bring them to bear. Victory. Is close enough to taste. I'm gonna dive down on this fighter ravager. Try and put some extra hurt on the enemy lord. Start sh shooting some of these infantry units with Odysseus. Got too many units going after their lord, so I'm gonna peel off some. Their lord is definitely in bad shape. He's getting chewed up by my griffin here. I'll let you all see the griffin up close. This is the lesser griffin. So he's not as strong as the uh, the griffin patriarch, which I believe is the, uh, the larger one. But hey, it's still a good unit for helping me control enemy lords and causing some damage. You can see he mulched that enemy leader pretty well. So that is a big boon uh, to have in our army for sure. Start swinging behind enemies here. Hungry for glory. Ungroup. Come on, Your get out of there. Have been routed. Well, my warriors should fight harder. Let's dive bomb this blob here. Take one unit to chase those spears down. Get these other units going. I like the battle camera in Troy really well. Seems like it's an improvement on. Like I haven't even turned on a debug cam, and it's still nice. Like it lets me get real close, lets me get far away. It's got the cinematic smoothing effect, so that you all don't get like a real choppy experience. So I mean, I'm pretty happy with the uh, the battle camera in this game. Our lesser Griffin performed very nicely here. Helped busted up blobs, busted up the enemy. So we're gonna get the comeback started here. Yeah, winner, winner, general dinner. That's right. The chicken eats you. It's like Pizza the Hut, except it's it's chicken. Chicken calls out for you. All right, well, there we go. You'll love uh, what you get from the Hydra army. Yeah, I like some of the Hydra units. I'm not a big fan of the Hydra. The Griffin, I definitely like, and I like some of the Griffin support units. They're not amazing, but they're pretty good. I do like the Hydra Priest. And I like some of the uh, the funky units that come with the Hydra, but Cer Cerberus was the one that I liked the most in combat. I don't know. I don't know which one I'm going to go for. What do you all think? Which creature should we go for? What's the most interest to you all? We're going to need more troops. Light troops. Heavy troops. We just need troops. <laughs> we just need troops this point. I need extra food as well, so I'm gonna get this building here. Give us some extra food, because we're gonna need that too. I'm just gonna spam more sword skirmishers for now, because I'm here and we need troops. Ignore my agent for the time being. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and let's establish a safe haven, just in case we end up needing it here later. Got a couple safe havens. Cerberus, because it's a good doggy. I personally really like Cerberus and his units. Yeah, I, there's a lot of neat units, honestly. Like, a 
Hydra is more skirmishy, right? You can use it from range for longer. It's not as good in melee. But I wasn't real impressed with its skirmish damage. Uh, who wants the non-aggression pack? It's going to be Diomedes. Yes, please. I will agree with that. Hail Hydra. <laughs> I love Cerberus, but I've seen a lot of them recently. Yeah, makes sense. I, I do like gold, but not right now, bro. I just... Let me, let me get things settled down, and then I'll think more about some of these trades. Alright, I've got more troops. I'm gonna push forward. I have a plan. Great deeds. And I'm gonna do a little more replenishment. We are very low on food income right now. It's about to get better in three turns. I do want to build this training camp so that I can eventually train heavy sword skirmishers. And there's... Uh, spear runners and stuff here too, so let's go ahead and get to the process of upgrading my agent. There's really nothing to spy on over here. Let's where did these guys come from. They came from over here. That army I just fought, I think, came from up here. Look at this, he's already trained. Pretty good stack, but this guy's just camping at Hyri. So we'll be alright in that regard. With sword and with wit. And in our turn, JR Gamer says, can you do a comparison to each game setting, historical truth? Uh, probably not, because I'm never going to play historical. Like, I get what you're saying. Like, hey, it'd be nice to have these compared. I'd like to compare it for you. But I just, I don't have the time to dig in and get you all the details. But essentially, if you don't like the idea of your general being a standalone character on the battlefield who has some pretty extraordinary abilities, then historical mode is for you. Your general is part of a bodyguard. Um, god powers and stuff that you get are just going to be like probably small impacts on your faction. Meaning like, oh, we've been praising Hera or Zeus and we get extra food income or something like that, right? It's going to be very tame. Stuff that could be considered you know, not to be far out of line with history. Whereas uh, if you're, you're looking at stuff like Truth Behind the Myth is kind of like splits the difference. You're going to have your general being a single character. Um, they're not part of a bodyguard. Uh, myth units are kind of a hybrid. They're special units, but they're not like a full-on monster. So like centaurs are just guys riding on horses. Um, whereas when you go to mythos, centaurs are a legit centaur. Like man with horse body. Okay? So that's, that's really the biggest differences that I'm aware of. But there could be others in terms of how the campaigns and mechanics work, but I'm not aware of them at the moment. And I haven't had time to dig into it yet. I apologize that I can't explain it further than that, but hopefully that gives you something. Odysseus I need all the units I can get right now. This is going to take me into the hole for a turn or so, but it is what it is. The subtle blade. Here. Alright. Air, you should try and set up an ambush. I intend to once I get done recruiting units. I intend to. Warner says, not going to bother with Mythos because he's saving for Warhammer 3. I imagine there's quite a few people feeling similar to you. Okay, we have a ton of wood and we could absolutely use this food right now, so that's a good barter. All right, this guy came out to fight against me. That is a lot of javelins. It worries me a little. He's got giants in his army as well. I'm going to use my griffin to try and punish their lord. If I can put their lord out of commission, I'll feel better about winning the rest of the battle. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to sit back with um, Odysseus and try and shoot some of their infantry, like these medium spears. We'll be gunning for them. Oh, I didn't really want to fight in the rain. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put a whole bunch of sword skirmishers here. Maybe even a couple more. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to put a pretty, pretty decent line of sword skirmishers here. 
I'm gonna hide a couple up here in the woods on top, and we'll try and swing and make an outflanking maneuver early. I'm gonna get Odysseus over here ready to run forward. Our Griffin can fly, so it doesn't really matter if there's a cliff in front of me, so let's get started. Let's turn this way. If we can get the attention of the enemy, I don't want to get peppered with a ton of javelins, so I'm going to actually try and act here. Okay. Oh, dang. They saw me over here. That's not what I wanted. Crap. The foe has shited your hidden this units. is bad. That is not good. Okay, first off, I'm going to go attack their lord just to try and draw their attention. There's a lot of enemy javelins, so we need to push so they can't kill my griffin with the javelins. Get up and see us running this way. Alright, let's hit play again. And on this flank, we're gonna have to swing around. Try not to flank these spearmen and then drive those skirmishers off of us because they will absolutely murder us. Like, Your full warriors on murder have spotted us. Hidden foes. Onward, so we're gonna push them. Alright, where's where's Griffin? Steve Abba can't name our Griffin Peter, huh? Alright, our Griffin. Probably dove on the Lord, but then I messed up. He's really hurting the morale of all the units he touches, which is great. Your warriors are losing get up there heart. and munch that Lord. Start targeting some of these spear units. In there. Right, we've got that spear surrounded. I'm going to go start pushing some of their skirmishers, so we can probably win that fight. I've got to deal with their lord here. Oh good, we routed some of their troops there. That is that is excellent. I move more troops to this side of the fight. Your warriors have been routed. Odysseus, come on man. I want you to get more kills. Move up closer. Losing to a giant vanguard. That's who's killing us over there. Ready to serve. Go. Actually just go kill these militia for now. We're doing good against their lord. But we're also taking plenty of casualties in an infantry fight, which is far less than ideal. We've got some more units free now, though. The giant vanguard has given us a little trouble. I could try and pick at them with Odysseus, see if it works. All right, their lord is getting owned. That is good news indeed. We have got to get rid of some of their javelins, or else these guys are going to absolutely skewer us. No pun intended, but pun, of, pun actually kind no of intended. I've got to keep Odysseus out of the fight and let him keep shooting enemy units. Because he does he does way more damage like to infantry. His, uh, his shots are kind of like... Back up, get back up, get out of there away from those javelins. Yeah, see, this is why we gotta get rid of the javelins. The, the javelins must die. Your hero is under attack. Yeah, he kinda is, isn't he? Odysseus, try to get out of that. Odysseus, I want you out of that fight. My Griffin's not loving this fight against the Giants. He's actually getting beat on pretty good. I don't know what we're going to do about these Giants. They're, they're actually beating me up quite a lot, and it's kind of running the battle for me. I'm trying to catch their skirmishers, but I'm also having trouble with regrouping units. So I thought we were doing okay, but I'm no longer feeling like we're doing that good. This Giant Vanguard is kind of crushing us. Again, another pun I don't necessarily intend, but tis the truth. There are two giant vanguards. We just routed one. I'm going to try and cycle charge again. Those giant vanguards are doing a lot of damage to me. Quit throwing your freaking javelins up at me, you turds. Right. I am trying, folks. I don't know that I'm succeeding, but I'm trying. My light sword skirmishers just kind of suck. 
we lose our griffin, then we're definitely toast. Like, meaning our campaign's probably toast. These giant vanguard are a real nuisance. I've never had such trouble getting rid of the giant vanguard. They were actually really bad in Truth Behind the Myth. They're kind of decent here. Well, sucks to be me. Can't seem to... I. It's usually not this hard to start the campaign. I just made a mistake, folks. I went onto that island with an army that I shouldn't have been over there with, and I got ahead of myself. That's all I had to do was not get ahead of myself, and I got ahead of myself. <laughs> So, it's, it's my fault. It's actually not that hard. You'd be surprised. So, oh man. We just shattered. See, all this is my fault. It's not because it's terribly hard, actually. Those giant skirmishers are now healing, too. They have that healing ability. They are, I got absolutely owned by the giant units. If it weren't for the giant units, we would have won this battle. <laughs> We would have easily won this battle. Because we started to turn the corner, but then the giant units just pummeled the hole right through the middle of my line. And just clobbered their way right through me. Like, I did not have a prayer. If we get to retreat and get back to a settlement, uh, we might be able to put, put together a fight again. It just really depends what happens here. How'd that feel, Odysseus? What does a neck chop feel like? Persistence is rewarded. Yeah, see, they get to catch us again here, and they and this is really frustrating. They, they already got a like me killing their lord ends up they shouldn't get to have a lord here. Like, that's really frustrating. They get a whole new lord. I couldn't kill their giant vanguard before, and something tells me we're not gonna do it this time. So let's um let's just load up a new one here. And do this right from the beginning. It's okay. You know, rough starts are okay. We learned something here. I'm not going to get salty about it or uh, get frustrated. I made the mistake. Like, this wasn't the game cheating or this and that. Like, I made the mistake there. I made a bad move. I shouldn't have made that move. And it cost me. Definitely cost me. Like, those giant vanguard, they seem really strong, but you know what would have killed them really, really quickly? My ambushers. The ones that I lost in a senseless battle. Some people might be like, well, how are you supposed to deal with those giants with the ambushers? The ambushers are very good against the giants. And would have killed them extremely quick. So, the key here is just don't make stupid mistakes like I did. And then end up with an army where I didn't have any unit diversity. And then you're just screwed. Like, so that's, that's all there is to it. Just dumb mistakes. Dumb mistakes. No air, only CA makes mistakes. Exactly, only CA makes mistakes. <laughs> it's never me. That's actually, I've played this campaign, like at least the starting of this campaign, I've played it a few times, probably like three or four times, and I've never had to restart. So that is a first for me. But at the same time, looking at the circumstances that I got myself into, I'm not terribly surprised that I had to restart. <laughs> so, I mean, what happened to me is very predictable, given the circumstances. Oh man, this harpy's berserked my uh, medium skirmishers, or medium swords. Heavy sword skirmishers, sorry. I said medium, heavy sword skirmishers. Uh, let's go ahead and ignore the infantry here, turn off fire at will, and skirmish scoot up. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some javelins into their leader. Take my light skirmishers and go after their slingers. Okay, up here into that fight. Alright, put some javelins into the face of their lord. We can end this fight. And my sword skirmishers give chase to the Achaean slingers. Get a little closer and do our skirmishing here. Our, our young spears? Are they supposed to be beating me in melee? I know they get a bonus versus swords, but I don't know. And maybe it's just a difficulty setting. I have no idea. 
I mean, Young's uh, sword skirmishers are not all that your units, good. It's no still more berserking. Ammunition. Holy crap. That's quite the ability on the harpies. Can I use it on them? There we go. How do you like that? How long does it last for? Oh man. Don't dive on my ambushers. I like those guys. I don't remember telling you to attack their lord. It seems like I clicked you on a different fight, but hey. I guess whatever you feel like. No need to listen to me. Your warriors are losing heart. Okay. Have some sword skirmishers that are getting a little bit too tired to fight. Get out of the way so I can javelin this guy. Oh, happy javelin day. He got wrecked. Did you see that? Yeah, he got wrecked. It was it was definitely a happy javelin day for him. What is going on with these harp or sirens? I cleaned up their infantry. Alright, their lord is toast. Army losses are kicking in. We just have to deal with these last few sirens. So we got the angry flying chickens here. And they're gone. They're terrible in melee, so. Now let's end the battle. The sirens seem to fire very slow. They they're not great. Like I haven't been super impressed with the sirens. Like if anybody knows any different than me, feel free to let me know. But I have not been impressed at all. With the sirens. You never punishment. Persistence is rewarded. Uh, the only impression Shining I've gotten from the sirens assist. is that they stink. <laughs> Again, that's, that's that's me, so maybe I'm wrong. Alright, so we're gonna need growth faster this time. Basically, I'm gonna clean up these three settlements. I'm gonna make darn sure not to get us in a bad position over here, like where we fought that Griffin army and then got stuck fighting that other army. We're not gonna make that mistake twice. So... If we go fight those guys, it's fine, but we have to do it quickly before they can raise up a large army. And we're going to have to make sure we don't get caught on the Griffin army at the same time. Contemplate military campaign lies before your thoughts turn to Troy and its legendary wall is said to have been erected by Poseidon. Did you ever find yourself besieging the Trojan capital? You require more than brute strength. Begin to conceive of a stratagem that might ensure victory. Does this victory involve a wooden horse? Swords? Words win through. Right, we're gonna get our cheat Hades ability again, and let's get Odysseus and attack the settlement. Cut them down. I'm gonna fight this one manually too because I don't want the auto resolve to give us longer to replenish. So I want to win it cleanly and quickly, and we should be able to do that by smacking down their lord with our javelins. What's this salt penny stuff? So Charles, uh, when you're watching the stream, it's like an in-stream currency that you get awarded just for fun. You can gamble it. Um, you can duel other players. It's just it kind of shows how much stream you've watched and how much you participated. So it's kind of like just like a little fun reward thing that people get for spending time watching the stream. That, that's what the salt pennies are. It's an in-stream currency. Can't really buy much with it. It's more for pride than anything else. But uh, again, just something I put in there so that hopefully people would have fun with it. You can check out how much you have by putting in exclamation point salt into the chat. Exclamation point salt is the command to check how many salt pennies you are in possession of. And that even if you have one salt penny, you are a rich person because you have salt. He who has salt is he who is rich. You're bored, Fuzzy Wuzzy? Well, you're here on the stream with us. It's better than nothing. But if Troy makes you bored, then you join the wrong stream. <laughs> the foe has sighted your hidden units. Uh, 
Uh, this unit's all beat up, so let's kind of haul it back for a second. Got a little bit of damage done on their leader. Victory is close enough to but, uh, taste. Just gonna do some chasing over here and here. Let's take our clubs. Find these. Start doing some more chasing. Alright. One of your units has no more ammunition. On oh, no, Odysseus going up here. Trying to jab one their lord to death because it's just a much quicker way of dealing with them. Your time has come. Got Odysseus shooting at him, and I've got my javelins firing away. Take him, Odysseus. Your hero is under attack. I'm gonna let Odysseus tank this guy because it opens him up to javelin attack. Not typically the kind of brawl you want to get a archer hero into, but in this case, it's acceptable because he's gonna die and die quickly. There we go. Pretty clean victory. Hey, don't feel bad, Lord Uthred. Every time I gamble salt pennies, I lose too, and it's my channel. You are wondering who, like, the, the, the salt penny Jeff Bezos is? It's Nikki. Nikki has more salt pennies than the rest of the world combined. All right, so we grabbed this settlement. Emerge these two units. And grab some more sword skirmishers. Oh, he sailed over here instead of staying back and recruiting more troops. Okay, well, we may have a good opportunity early to do what we couldn't do properly in the last game. So I'm kind of excited about that. Right, um, I'm going to end the turn real quick. Hey, Fuzzy Wuzzy. Thanks for the five. He says, hey, Air, how much do a pile of bones weigh? Oh, dang. All right, hold on. I got to think. Lame pun. Pile of bones. How much do they weigh? Uh. Uh. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> Just seen that coming. Thanks, Fuzzy. Thanks for the additional five. He says a skeleton. So a pile of bones weigh a skeleton. So lame puns are still intact and thriving on this channel. And it pleases me a great deal. Air is pleased. We gotta make sure we don't run into that Griffin army. So I'm gonna sail out here and I'm gonna double check for the Griffin army. If the Griffin army's out here, we're gonna avoid it. I don't know when it spawns. If it's not out there, I want to quickly get in and keep these guys from doing more recruiting. But if we have to, we'll pull back and we'll get properly equipped this time. Thanks, Fuzzy. Appreciate it. Love the lame joke. Thanks for the support. Let's build up this quarry. Construction. I'm not going to do that construction yet. There we go. I suck at dueling, too. Well, like I said, Lord Uthred, I, I lose everything I do with the salt pennies. Words win Sail up. Skim the waves. Got line of sight. There's no Griffin army here. They've only got two Show units, no so we should be able to overpower them and take care of business properly this time, unless the Griffin army, like, spawns right on top of me. Totally get screwed over here. We'll see. It's not a lame joke, it's a fantastic joke. Well, I mean, you're correct. Lame joke isn't an insult for me. That, that's like, it's an admiration. Oh my gosh, they spawned right on top of me. With sword and with wit. They spawned on top of me, come on. We can't retreat, I have to fight it. <laughs> I was like, hey, just as long as they don't spawn right on top of me, we should be good, and then they spawned right on top of me. <laughs> All right, well, we better do well. At least there's not a very large army nearby for our enemies. So as long as we don't get too beat up right here. Uh, 
All right, let's see what we can do. We need to do well in this fight. Let's start our... I'm... I kind of want to use Odysseus's range a little to see if we can pick off a couple of enemies successfully. Up here. The clubmen may be hiding the scrub over here. Odysseus on this flank. Get Odysseus up. I target some. Spearman here? Hang on, what? <laughs> Nick, thanks for the 10. He says, get off air. No means no. What do you mean? I I'm confused. What did I do? What are we saying no to? <laughs> thanks for the uh, support, Nick. Appreciate it. Please, ex please explain what I'm saying no to for me, though, because I'm obviously a dullard at the moment and am not following. Okay, well, our sword skirmishers are making very short work of their cavalry. I confused. I'm Warner. <laughs> Hi, Warner. I'm confused. <laughs> oh, man. I've never told you all that I appreciate the, uh, the, uh, Stiff dose of sarcasm that you all bring here. Okay, let's move around. Odysseus, just start shooting those guys. He should get a lot of kills while we'll flank here. Odysseus is getting some really nice flank shots into that fight. Look how many kills he's getting and how quickly. Victory is close yeah, he's picking up a lot test. of kills per shot because that's a very dense fight. See, these are the kind of shots you want from your archer lord right here because, like I said, their their bow is kind of like a ballistic and penetrate multiple infantry units. And so you want to get in a position, if possible, where you can get that kind of damage. Your warriors are losing heart. Right, I'd really like to have a chain route here from the enemy army as quick as possible. Because I want less casualties. There we go. Got the chain route. Nick says griffins. <laughs> so you need me to get off the griffins? I'm trying to. They, they spawned right on top of me. I know no means no, but the Griffins didn't listen. I didn't give the Griffin army consent to be here, but they didn't listen. Okay, Nick? <laughs> Thanks for the support, but I agree. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right, well, we beat them. And we did so with relatively manageable Shining losses, Odysseus. and I can now siege the settlement before they do any more recruiting. And uh, I am going to hold the siege, like I'm going to encircle them In Athena's name. just for a little bit here. Heirs blaming victims now. What? No! Don't get me into this, Regina. I'm the victim here. The Griffins did it to me. I said I don't want the Griffins there, and the Griffins came after me. You get it? Heir is the victim. Griffins are the bad guys. Show no fear. I didn't want the Griffins to be there, but the Griffins didn't listen. They didn't give me the choice. When does Troy come out on Steam? It is out today, Roger. Troy is on Steam today. Pushy Griffins. Air is victim blaming himself. <laughs> There you go. That sounds like me. Somehow creating problems for myself. That that actually sounds familiar. I like it, Nick. We have the uh, no consent emoji there. <laughs> That's perfect. Those griffins did not have my consent. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and kill these guys because I just want to. And I think we can. All right. We're going to make more progress in like these last 20 or 
30 minutes of the stream here than we did the whole first part because of all the technical issues and then me failing. But hey, whatever. We're still here. We're still playing. I'll have to make sure and put some comments up on that um, video playback. I may have to just edit it to um, where people don't have to see the my struggles with the... Uh, Editing. Actually, I feel like we can win this because if we can blob them up here and just unload javelins on them, we'll get a pretty quick victory. Okay. Javelin time. Give them all our javelins. Gift them every javelin we have. Want the enemy gifted many, many javelins. Excellent. Excellent. All right, here we go. Here we go. Trying to get in here. Leave air alone. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Nick. Thanks, Nick. You gotta protect me from me. I, I definitely need protecting from myself. I mean, have you all even seen some of the mistakes I've made before? That's right, Warner. You get a javelin. You get a ja Everybody gets javelins. Javelins for all. A merry javelin day to all. Right, we're gonna start pushing it. Actually, we've got the both enemy lords coming up behind me. I'm gonna get one busy with some clubs, and then I'm gonna try and get the other one busy with Odysseus and use my javelins to rip him a new one. You might be wondering what new thing I'm going to rip him. Yeah, just use your imagination. Why? Why did he suddenly get so fast and like my javelin stood still and just took a charge? I don't understand that. Your hero is under attack. Yes, he is. Get off me. This lord is like completely ignoring all the other units and just bull rushing my my guys here. Alright, well, I think we're doing okay. Um, I totally forgot about my harpies, so that's probably not okay. <laughs> Uh, Lord Uthred says, uh, thanks for the five, he says, show me on the doll where the griffin touched you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've ever told you all that you're the best. <laughs> I hope the stream entertains you. And um, for me, I always get entertained. You all always bring the A game to the chat here, so thank you. I am going to try and get their lord out of combat with me so I can pump him full of javelins. I'll pump his guts full of javelins. These clubmen over here are annoying. Alright. Killed those skirmishers. Can we please jab on this guy to death? Like, just make him a pincushion, please. Make him very dead. Let's please make him dead. Your warriors. I've been routed. Feeling pretty confident, though, that we're going to win this. Barring any disasters here. And it is me who's in control, so disasters are most assuredly not barred. Not officially, at least. I'm going to escort this guy off the battle map. 
my light units, you can run them down. I'm out of ammunition with one of my skirmishers. Oh my gosh, Odysseus is getting absolutely pummeled. Like, I mean, absolutely. Oh, run, you fool. Why did he stop? He's like, hey, let me stop here for a minute. Let this. What is going on? Like, Odysseus just... Uh, I couldn't run away. I, it wouldn't let me run away. I was getting away, and then he stopped and allowed the enemy general to kill him. It's like he stopped and said, hey, I don't need to live. And then all my troops routed. Remember how I said, barring any disaster and with me, you never know? Well, here we are. Here we are. What a load of crap. The enemies have a challenge ability, which forces them into melee. I mean, that would be the only thing that could possibly explain what just happened, because otherwise I would be insanely confused. I can't let this lord come back from routing. I have to keep chasing him, because if they get another lord back, then I'm absolutely screwed. I'm already going to have a lot of trouble with this one. It's mostly from a morale standpoint. My morale is going to be extremely low. We're going to have major morale issues here. By Ares, your warriors are rallying. I don't know what Ares has to do with it, but I'm glad they're rallying. Well, wounded Odysseus isn't ideal, because more people might declare war on me, but it is better than straight up losing the battle, which was the result of our Victory attempt last time. To taste. Victory doesn't taste so good here, but it is a victory. Doesn't taste great, but it's a victory. That is annoying. Like, my guy was running away, and he's like, Hey, you know what? I'm just gonna turn around and let this guy slay me. Like, that sounds good. I like how we got killed, but we won? Huh? CA, please? Anybody? Alright, whatever. Just pick this guy. I've got what it takes. We just need a commander for a few tur turns. That Well, that almost certainly dropped my standing in the diplomacy. Yeah, now we're all the way down to rank 59, which means everybody's going to hate my guts and try and kill me because we don't have our legendary hero or whatever they call it. But, I mean, he'll be back in a few turns, and at least we took over this entire province, so we, we finally did that. Uh, let's do this one that helps us grow happiness wise. Eager for action. And recruit more units. So that we won't appear any weaker than we already are. Constructing more stone, but we don't have enough wood. I want more food over here, but again we don't have enough wood, so I need wood. Let's end this turn. Charles says, thanks, Air. I joined the stream to watch some Troy. Now I can leave with a slight gambling problem. Well, you're welcome, Charles. Glad I could help. No. Just, we're good like that. Hang on, they're going to give me all this wood. Oh, no, it's a perm It's an agreement for a bunch of turns. No, thanks. Uh, Warner says, if your general is killed in battle, he'll be shown getting killed in the campaign map, even if you won the battle. Well, I have to admit... That does leave CA in a bit of a predicament, right? What do they show? The enemy didn't win, but your general died. I'll win or die trying. Let's see why is okay. Well, we bounce back up to higher strength rate, so that should keep everybody from declaring war on us. So I, we're gonna be fine this time. We got Odysseus killed, but it's fine. This is fine. Still short just a little bit of wood on this. I need to go ahead and build the citadel though, because I need the better barracks with haste. Just blow through a few turn ins here, build things up, get better recruitment. 
not bartering with you right now, so get over yourself. All right, there we go. We've got access to bronze or wood. I'm gonna burn through another turn without building anything because I'm trying to save up wood. Still hovering decent strength rank, so shouldn't have everybody and their dog declaring war on me. Odysseus will be back in a few turns. Then I'll carry out the next war. I'd like to go fight for that gold mine up there. Okay, motivation critical. Yeah, okay. This guy, see, I should have been more careful I picked. Some people get less and less motivated from, like, sitting in a settlement. So they, this is why I don't like this motivation thing. He's, all right, so he loses motivation when he's garrisoned. He gains motivation when he ends the turn in a province with high foreign influence, or if he wins a battle. So I should have just ungarrisoned him, and he wouldn't have been losing motivation. So we there we will go. go down in history. And I could just move him into a foreign territory, but then that has risk of its own. And plus, I'm pretty sure Odysseus is going to be back here pretty I'll do quick. It right. Two turns, so we just gotta get through two turns with What happens when you lose all the motivation, Warder? Do they like rebel and take the army with them? Or do they just lose fighting capability? Remind me what the motivation does, if you know. I forget. It's been a long time. Wow. That's a lot of gold, and I will definitely take you up on that. Because food is plentiful for me at the moment. They just perform worse in battle? Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So definitely not something I'm concerned about at the moment. Alright, so now I'm gonna get the... get the extra food production. And the next time we get enough wood and stone... shouldn't be all that many turns. We can improve our bronze production, we can improve our... Uh, stone production, so now, now we've got a bunch of good options. So let's... Started on that. And strong tactics. Royal Decree available. Uh, what did we do? Oh, we did the... Uh, oh, yeah, we did do the gold one. Okay, good. Uh, let's do stone next. In the turn. So now we're getting gold per turn as well, which means we should be able to hire the griffin. As soon as they get Odysseus back, we'll hire up that griffin. Negative. 130 gold, and they want a bunch of my food again. Uh, you know what? Sure. I... No, oh, wait. They want gold, and they're giving me food. No, screw you. Just tuning in, what are your thoughts on this mode? Um, I like the Mythos mode. I mean, I'm at near the end of my stream here. I'm just... I'm going a little longer, because I started late, and I had That's a ton of technical more. difficulties. Um, so, I, I am streaming a little bit later than I normally would. Yeah, I had a ton of tech difficulties earlier, and but uh, yeah, I like this game mode. It's it's the only game Shining mode I'm gonna play Odysseus. this game in. If I'm being honest, like I'm not even gonna play this game in historical mode or truth behind the myth. Like Mythos is the only one that interests me. I want to build this first, the training camp, and then let's look at getting. Additional stone. Oh, I need a little more stone. A couple more turns. Only one more turn, so we'll. Well, I think two more turns. Let's go ahead and get a little bit done real quick. Um, here we go. Thanks for the five hammond. He says, "What do you call a Pyrrhic victory when Pyrrhus hasn't been born yet? A typical knight for heir and of Ithaca. Classic patchy, Mamma Mia." What are you saying here? What, what I mean, what are you saying? You're saying that I screw things up plenty and get lots of my own men killed? Because I don't know where you even get that idea from, Hammond. I mean, where where would you even get this idea? Oh look, there's Hydra people over here. Let's go kill them. Kill the Hydras. Alright, we're gonna go kill these Hydra followers. 
Uh, where is the uh, safe havens, divine will, objectives? Where is it that you decide to pursue? Like, does it pop up in messages? And a mission, yeah, missions. Here we go. Opportunity beckons. City growing in. Like, uh, where do we take on? Like the objectives to go get the Hydra or like go get these mythical beasts. You all, I haven't even gotten to that part yet. <laughs> Regina called it an Eric victory. Who yes. That is indeed what it shall be known as. We are short just a bit of stone here. We don't have enough stone for that either. So let's end the turn again. You keep cutting off the Hydra's head and it grows back, then that's an endless food source. Num nums, that's right. Lord Uthred. That's absolutely right. Hey, thank you all for joining. I'll be streaming this. Um, I think for the time being, we're going to... I might just... I'll like, just stream this campaign to its finish. Um, I think that's what I might do, yep. Let's go ahead and fight this battle, and then I probably do need to end the stream. I've been on here for a long time, and Mrs. Air doesn't know why I'm running late, so I should probably go ahead and get done. But, uh, yeah, it's I wanted to make sure I got some extra time on here for all the mess at the beginning. Let's start the deployment. Alright, so the Hydra troops, they've got these drinkers of venom. Now, I don't know if they've been told this or not by, like, poison control or something, but... Drinking venom is just not advisable under any circumstances. We got Hydra Archers. I wasn't super impressed with the Hydra Archers. These Hydra Defenders are really cool looking units. Heavy infantry that are unbreakable. They're not great in melee, but they do some poison stuff, which is kind of cool. So the Hydra units definitely look neat. I'll give them that. Like, they're pretty interesting. Yeah, they, they really should lay off the poison. It's uh, not advisable. Probably be faster to just run into this flank, honestly. The gods smile. Reinforcements are here. About time, reinforcements. Alright, so this is why I like Ithaca, the constant javelin flinging. Air is just happier when there's javelins in the air. Victory! Is close enough to taste. Wow. The uh, auto resolve doesn't think much of these Hydra troops. And again, the pain rain of javelins coming down on them is rather substantial. Alright, there we go. Well, that is not ideal. One of your units has no more ammunition. I don't want my ambushers in combat. Even just, wow, those drinkers of venom are really bad. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get rid of them. Let's see if we can chase down these Hydra archers. Well... Hail Hydra. They're not not getting the, the luck they need tonight. Got those Hydra archers. Get to this next unit. There we go. Routed their lord. Kind of surprised that they don't have army losses kicking in here. They really don't have anything left. They are in very, very dire straits. Alright. I would cop these guys out here, too. There we go. Come on. Be done with it. Ain't got nothing, Hydra. There we go. Spotted hidden foes. 
Got him. That's the end of that. Except for these drinkers of venom. Oh, there they go. All right, everybody's gone. Slingers are the new archers. I just want someone's slingers to shoot uphill over a building at me. <laughs> As slingers in this game, there was the armored Argive slingers I used. They were pretty good, but I haven't liked any other slinger unit that I've used. And as far as archers go, the Trojan princes and Trojan nobles are really good, and almost every other archer unit I've used feels crappy. So, and upward. That's just me. You don't have to agree, but that's kind of the way they felt to me. I'd like to get some more recruitment capability here. I definitely want to be able to get a hold of um, ambushers and ultimately exemplary ambushers because the, the javelins are very powerful. We run into more stuff like those giants, for instance, and we'll definitely want to have um, those guys on our side. Now, as far as building an altar, um, I want to say it's era, so we get extra morale, the units recruited in this province. Now, hang on, let's go into the divine will here. I, I should have already taken advantage of this divine will thing, by the way. Uh, you get these different effects for praising the gods, and I should have should have been taking advantage of this. Uh, with Hera, if I get to tier 3, we get extra replenishment rate. Um, but we get extra missile damage and armor piercing damage for slingers, which we're not really going to use slingers. Um, I want to say it's um, Sidon I end up kind of liking here. We get extra movement at C. Nope, it's not Poseidon. Never mind. Poseidon, screw you. Um, is it Ares? Yeah, plus 20% morale to sword and axe units. I use a lot of sword units. Um, so that is definitely something. And then, yeah, at level 2, we get 20% to melee attack of sword and axe units. So I'm going to focus on Ares. Do a Hecatomb here. Help gain some favor from Ares. So that'll give us tier 1 there. And I'm going to build a altar to Ares here as well. Yeah, I, I like Ares in terms of what he has to offer here. If I want bronze faster, I actually probably want more stone. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's going to be all the time I have for this episode. Hey, I have to say thank you so much for all the people who stuck around, supported tonight. Um, put up with the technical difficulties. Uh, for those of you who might be watching this back, I will hopefully try and edit this some so that all those technical difficulties maybe get cut out. Um, but in any case, thank you to everybody for being here. It was a really fun night. Appreciate you all sticking with me. We had plenty of challenges, um, both from mistakes I made in campaign and uh, with spammers in chat and <laughs> technical difficulties on my software and all kinds of issues. So thank you. Thank you all for sticking with me and uh, helping me get things done. Really appreciate it. And I will see you all with some more streams uh, next week, so keep an eye out for it. We'll be streaming more of this next week. I may record episodes of it as well in between just to make it to where you don't have to go a week at a time without any action in this campaign. Um, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Anyway, Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I'll see you all next time.